In the first example, we looked at the case where we increase both labour and capital by the same proportion. In this video, we're considering the case where we hold capital constant and increase labour. So we're thinking about the marginal product of labour. We'll look at that concept first with a couple of graphs, and then we'll look at how we can identify diminishing returns to labour. That is where the marginal product of labour decreases as labour increases. Finally, we'll think about the relationship between the marginal product of labour and hiring decisions. We have a production schedule here where we're holding capital constant. So we have our levels of labour and the corresponding output. What we'll do first is to graph this production function with capital held constant. That's its characteristics. Next, we'll determine the marginal product of labour. We'll fill in these question marks. And then we'll graph the marginal product curve. So, first production function. Well, that's just plotting y against L. Here we have that production function. So we have L on the horizontal axis and output on the vertical axis. What we see is the function flattens out as L increases. The slope down here is greater than the slope up here. This is characteristic of diminishing returns. Remember that the, the slope of our production function is equal to the marginal product of labour and that's equal to the partial derivative of the production function with respect to labour. So we'll have del f of k l over del l. For this course, you should be able to calculate simple partial derivatives, particularly for a cobb dogg production function. Let's see how we can calculate the marginal product of labour, given our production schedule. That's quite simple. The marginal product of labour is the increase in output for each extra unit of labour input. So we're subtracting one level of output from another. So going from zero units of labour to one unit of labour, we have 10 minus zero is equal to 10. Next, from one unit of labour to two units of labour, We'll have 19 minus 10, 9. And then from 2 to 3 units of labour, the output goes from 19 to 27, so the increase is 8, and so on. What we can see there is that the as labour increases, our marginal product of labour decreases. That corresponds to that flattening out of the production function we saw in the previous graph. What we'll do next is to plot these values of the marginal product against labour. So we, again we have labour on the horizontal axis and this time the marginal product of labour, the increase in the output on the vertical axis. The marginal product of labour at each level, say at uh, 2 and uh, 4, is equal to the slope at that point on the curve of the production function. So here we can clearly see we have a decreasing marginal product of labour we have diminishing returns to labour. Now we've established what diminishing returns are, let's see if we can identify them in production functions. We'll use the same three production functions as we did in example one. Remember the marginal product of labour is equal to the first partial derivative of the production function with respect to L, so del f k of L over del L. In other words, we're differentiating our production function with respect to L holding k constant. In our first production function, we differentiate 2k plus 15L with respect to L holding k constant. Well, we just treat that first term as a constant. The first root of that uh, is zero. So the marginal product of labour, del F del L, is equal to 15. So in this first case, we don't have diminishing returns. The marginal product of labour is constant for all values of L. In the next case, we have the production function is equal to the square root of K times L. Remember, that's a Cobb-Douglas production function. We differentiate again with respect to L holding K constant. Well, that's equal to one half times the square root of K on L. So if we're holding K constant and increasing L, because L is in the denominator there, we'll see that if we hold K constant and increase L, the marginal product of labour will decrease. But as L gets bigger, 
uh, this value will decrease. We have diminishing returns in this case. For example, see again we're differentiating with respect to L holding K constant. Well, if K is constant, the first derivative of that first term is zero. In this case, we'll have well, 15 over two times the square root of L. Once again, as L increases, this amount will get smaller. And so, yes, the marginal of product of labor falls as L increases, and we have diminishing returns. Our next problem is to think about what's the optimal level of labor given that we have diminishing returns. So we'll assume that our real wage, WRP, is 6. We've got two hiring decisions, the first when L equals 3, and the second when L is equal to 7. Let's look at the case where L equals 3. So the real wage is 6. The amount of labour we have is 3. What happens if we increase labour from a 3 to 4? Well, the marginal product of labour is 7. That's the benefit we gain from increasing labour by one unit. The cost is the real wage. So the firm should hire. The benefit, the increase in output, exceeds the real wage. Again, we have the real wage is equal to 6. This time, the level of labour is 7. Should the firm hire more or less labour? We're down here. Output is 49. The marginal product of labour, that's what we're interested in, is 4. So the benefit gained from adding one more unit of labour is 4 units of output. The cost exceeds the benefit. The firm should not hire an additional unit of labour.